The rate of economic growth in Ghana has been substantial and the levels of poverty have dropped. Despite these positive trends, the rate of inequality has grown with significant differences occurring between regions and between rural and urban areas. Furthermore, specific individuals and households such as the extreme poor have been shown to be particularly vulnerable to shocks and risks like sickness, disability, loss of assets and old age which push them further in poverty and deprivation. Social protection enables them to better prevent, manage and overcome these risks and eventually break out of poverty. In addition to this, social protection has been demonstrated to play an important role in poverty reduction and ensuring that growth is more inclusive. Given the growing relevance of social protection to addressing poverty, vulnerability and inequality, there has been a significant increase in the number of programs in Ghana. Examples are the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty LEAP program, the National Health Insurance Scheme NHIS, the School Feeding Program and the Free School Uniforms and Exercise Book program. His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama created a new ministry with a new mandate. This is the first time in the history of the Republic of Ghana that we have a ministry solely focused on coordinating in a more efficient and effective way social protection programs in Ghana. Because this government has social democratic ideals, it was important for the government to institute and create this ministry so that there, was, there will be strong leadership and strong direction aimed at ensuring that a social protection system was created in Ghana, a system that is people-oriented and a system that ensures that we effectively target potential beneficiaries for social protection and very importantly a social protection system that ensured that we would be able to reduce poverty and at that time attain the Millennium Development Goal on reduction of poverty and yes we succeeded because we're actually the first country to realize MDG 1 on halving poverty. To this end Government ministries, departments and agencies and other civil society organizations have developed and implementing a number of social protection interventions to support the category of extreme poor, vulnerable and excluded in order to ensure complementarity and ensure collaboration among all sectors and build the capacity of the household. These households not only receive the cash grant from the Lifelong Empowerment Against Poverty, but they are also linked to other proper interventions as well to help them live out of extreme poverty. This woman in the Saboba district of the northern region could not hide her joy as she was enrolled onto the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty Leave program, which she said she used part of her money to buy goods for rearing. <laughs> That through all the interventions, she is able to attend medical care. She is able to buy a sheep through relief, and she is able to buy a goat. And she is able to share some business when she generates money. She used to buy the books, items for the students, and at the same time pay the fees of the one which is in excess now. We have used electronic and other scientific means to target potential beneficiaries and also to pay cash benefits, for instance, under LIB. The concept or the need for social protection has been well documented 
and accepted. As a result, we have a fragmentation or a proliferation of programs in the country, leading to fragmentation, duplication of effort, and in spite of that, creating gaps. And one key activity in achieving this consolidation, this efficiency in social protection system in Ghana is to establish a single national household register. By a single national household register, we mean a socioeconomic uh, database of all the households in the country, uh, which would have not just the demographics of the household, but also the socioeconomic characteristics of each household. It is when an aggregate of social protection programs is uh, provided to a single household that the real possibility of graduating out of uh, poverty can be achieved. The gender ministry led by the minister Nana Oyelitha has registered inmates across the prisons in Ghana. 2,881 victims of the June 3 and the Keta Tidal Wave disaster also received emergency leave grants from the government. All these forms part of the government's social protection interventions. Metropolitan Authority and the Ghana Prison Service, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection is here to fulfill our mandate of addressing the health needs of our vulnerable in our society and for here our prisoners in Ashanti region. The leap targeting uh, process uh, involve uh, geographical targeting, community-based targeting, and proxy means text uh, targeting. How do we go about this thing? We use poverty maps from uh, Ghana Statistical Service. With poverty, what I mean by poverty map is this. Ghana Statistical Service has data across Ghana on, on the poverty profile of the various uh, regions, of the various districts and we have even requested of for communities as well so we use this data to allocate beneficiaries to the region then then we go further to use this data to allocate beneficiary to the districts within a region then we go further to use this data to help allocate uh, the beneficiaries to the communities in the districts social protection interventions are implemented by a number of uh, ministries, departments, and agencies. It is not all located within one ministry. And therefore, to ensure that we have a coordinated approach in the implementation of social protection, we need to have a framework that will guide the coordination of social protection. We have what we call also the Interministerial Technical uh, Committee on Social Protection. And this comprises the various social protection programs that we are implementing, such as the school feeding program, the LEAP program, that's the livelihood against poverty program, the labor intensive public works program, the exempt category under the national health insurance, the school uniform and the exercise book and other programs in the agricultural sector. So they form what we call the uh, Interministerial uh, Technical Committee. And what they mainly do is to ensure that there is joint planning, you know, for all these interventions to ensure that uh, the programs support one another. Along the line, the World Bank Group 
decided to engage with the Ministry of Gender to explore under the Africa Health for Market, Africa Health for Market Equity Project, uh, to find out whether we can deploy technology as that intervention and increase that cost effectiveness. We therefore engage to, first of all, digitalize the proxy test too, and put it onto a palm top, if, uh, which is a bit ruggedized. And that palm top has a micro thermal printer. So what happens then is that we decided as an innovation to deploy those tools, that is the PMT2, directly in the households and not for them to come to us. Because poverty by itself is an expensive venture for the poor. They can't move away from their immediate environs. So it was necessary that we found a way to get there, deploy the tools directly at their houses, and then on the spot, calculate whether they were poor or not. We want to ensure that we have an equal and even playing ground that we create employment opportunities and that the vulnerable, the most vulnerable, who for one reason or the other cannot fend for themselves, elderly persons, orphans and vulnerable people, severely disabled persons, are adequately supported by the government of Ghana. So I'm very happy that today we have one of the most comprehensive social protection policies in Africa. And we're very grateful to the development partners and to the intersectorial, interministerial team for putting together this brilliant social protection policy.